Well, good afternoon and welcome to The Idahoan Show. Uh, I'm making this video as a quick follow-up to my muzzleloader overload testing video in order to address some recurring comments that I've been getting. The first one was this issue of, well, okay, what if you load it with powder and then you just don't seat your projectile all the way? Um, you know, there's a lot of lore about the idea that having that air gap on top of your powder is going to dramatically increase pressure. Well, there's a couple of competing phenomenon at work in that scenario. Uh, if you have an air gap, on the one hand, that may allow your powder to spread out and increase the surface area that's available for combustion, which will increase the burning rate of the powder and may cause the pressure to rise more quickly. So it's possible that that scenario could result in pressure increasing above what it would be if the powder was all compressed into a charge that the, the flame front couldn't propagate through as readily. On the other hand, if you have that airspace, it provides more space for the, the combustion products, the expanding gases that are produced by the burning powder to expand into, and that's gonna reduce the pressure. So leaving an air gap could increase your pressure a little bit, or it could decrease the pressure a little bit, depending on the details of the scenario. Uh, the bottom line, though, is I don't think that that's really going to have that much of a difference, at least compared to the kinds of tests that I did in that overload testing video. Um, you know, I have here a, a muzzle loader that is, it's not the same one that I tested before. Uh, this one obviously is finished out a little bit more nicely with a, a wooden stock and so forth. Um, but it's an identical design. So, First off, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to load it up normally, I'm going to shoot it, and then I'm going to load it up and leave a little bit of a gap on our uh, projectile and shoot it again and see if I can even tell any difference on the recoil. So let's go ahead and do this. Uh, I'm going to load it with 120 grains of powder, or rather pyrodex. And a 365 grain mini ball. which is a rather tight fit to the bore. Okay, so I've got that all the way down. You can see there's just about an inch of ramrod sticking out of the barrel with the bullet properly seated. Okay, that definitely had a bit of kick to it, but not bad. Now, once again, we go 120 grains. Pack the powder down by itself, first off. Now, Load another mini ball.
And I stuck the butt of the, my gun in the mud here. Normally I like to rest the butt of the gun on my foot. That keeps it off the ground, keeps the gun under control, but it slipped off my foot and I happen to be standing in a rather muddy area at the moment. Anyway, okay. So there you can see we've got just a few inches of additional air gap there. So this is probably, at least if you believe the rumors, uh, sort of a worst case scenario for air gap. Okay, that definitely felt like it had less recoil. So, in this case, I'm going to guess that that probably uh, reduced the pressure in the specific case. Again, depending on the specific scenario, it might increase it or it might reduce it. Um, it would be interesting to try this with a gun that actually had a, a pressure transducer mounted on it so we could really measure the difference in chamber pressure. But uh, at this point, I do not have a pressure transducer that would be suitable for that. Uh, maybe someday I can do that test if I ever get a hold of the right equipment. Anyway, the next uh, concern or comment that I kept getting was, well, you know, what if you, or what if a person double charged it? You know, what if they loaded it up and then forgot that they loaded it and loaded it again? Now, the reason I didn't specifically address that in my initial overload testing is it seems to me that in that scenario, basically all you're doing is increasing the, the effective mass of the projectile. Because let's say you put in 100 grains of powder and a 300 grain bullet, and then you forget that you loaded it. So you put in another 100 grains of powder and another 300 grain bullet. Now, assuming the combustion gas doesn't manage to get past the first bullet, assuming that makes a good seal, basically what you've got is just your same old 100 grain powder charge, but now instead of a 300 grain bullet, you've got 300 plus 100 plus another 300 would be a 700 grain bullet, uh, or, or rather a 750 grain effective projectile weight since it has to push both the first bullet, the second powder charge, and the second bullet all out of the barrel at the same time. And what I did do in the previous test was I subjected the rifle to a variety of overloads, including excessive projectile weight. Uh, and as well as it handled those, I don't think that we'd really gain any new information from a, you know, a double charge. But, you know, as well as it did against overloads, let's go ahead and try it. Okay, 120 grains of Pyrodex. Three hundred and sixty. I always forget if these are three hundred and sixty or three hundred and sixty-five grains, but three hundred and sixty-something grain mini ball. Okay, our air gap seems to have generated enough powder fouling in that air gap that now this projectile doesn't want to seat any further down than that. Um, so hang on a minute, I'm going to go get a mallet so I can finish seating this properly.
Okay, I think I got that seated. Now, let's put in another 150, or uh, 120 grains rather, of Pirate X. And another mini ball. You know, I think the reason I can never remember the exact weight of these is because it actually varies depending on the alloy that they're cast from. If it's pure lead, I think they're 365. If you alloy the lead with a little bit of tin, I think that brings the weight down to more like 360. Okay, so now we have a double charged rifle. Okay, recoil from that was monstrous. Uh, you know, don't double charge your guns, but uh, as you can see, the muzzle loader's fine. I'm fine. Um, I think, as I said, that this overload scenario is amply covered in the tests that we'd already done just by increasing the weight of the projectile, because in effect, that's really all we're doing here if we accidentally double loaded or triple loaded or whatever. Now, the final recurring comment I got was people saying things along the lines of, well, if you use smokeless powder, then you'll blow it up. Or uh, those who caught the fact that actually we did try smokeless powder in the previous test and it didn't blow up. Uh, some people pointed out that, well, if you use a faster burning smokeless powder, it might blow up. And I agree, you know, if you use a fast burning flake type smokeless powder, and if you overload it enough, you could almost certainly find a point at which the gun would be damaged by that overload. However, you know, I've seen a lot of other videos on YouTube where people have done things along those lines where they put a massive overload of fast burning smokeless powder in a muzzle loader and the thing explodes. Um, what I haven't seen, and maybe it's there and I just haven't seen it, or maybe no one's really thought to test it yet, is someone to take a large caliber, or rather I should say a magnum bolt action rifle, something like a 300 Win Mag or a 7 millimeter Remington Magnum, uh, you know, a bolt action rifle with a relatively large cartridge and reload a cartridge, you know, ignoring the reloading data, just resize and prime a, an empty case, fill the case up to the brim with a fast burning smokeless powder like 700X or Unique, and then clamp the gun in a vise, test it remotely, and see if that doesn't blow up just like one of these muzzle loaders that's been overloaded with that kind of fast burning smokeless powder. Um, I think that would be a very instructive test to see, or to see that comparison rather. So I'm not going to do that today, um, mostly because I don't have a large caliber bolt action rifle that I'm willing to sacrifice to that test. But if I ever get a hold of one, maybe I will do a direct comparison where you know, I take probably the same prototype that I tested last time uh, and you know, load that muzzle loader up with fast burning smokeless powder, see how much it takes to blow that thing up, and then load up a bolt action with fast burning smokeless powder and see if it doesn't just blow up uh, the same way. Or uh, maybe what I do is, again, fill a uh, a 300 Magnum cartridge with smokeless powder, see what that does to the, uh, or with fast burning flake type smokeless powder, see what that does to the bolt action, then use that same cartridge as a powder measure to dispense that amount of fast burning flake type smokeless powder into the muzzle loader, and see if the muzzle loader handles it uh, as well or better than the bolt action, or whether there's any meaningful difference. Anyway, so I think that would be an interesting test to do, but 
Uh, I'm not sure when, if ever, I'll get around to doing that. Uh, in any case, until next time, thank you for watching The Idahoan Show.